Hello, Daddy. Welcome to our channel. My name is Ryan. I am one half of the Sam and Ryan enterprise that is taking the internet by storm with entertainment content that you just can't get enough of. I'm already annoyed with myself. Okay, let's just calm down. I have been doing a series on this channel called Two Truths and a Lie About My Career, all of which are true, but one of which contains a bold-faced lie. In each new video, I give you three new stories with a theme, but before I start, I tell you which of the stories from last video was the lie. On our last episode, we talked about some steamy sex scenes from my career, and I told you three stories about three of those sex scenes, one of which contained a bold-faced lie. The first story was about an independent feature that was dead on arrival and never got released, thank God, because if it did, I would be horrified. It was about a director who sort of called an audible in the 11th hour and asked me to see simulate sex with an inflatable dolphin, which did actually happen. Yeah. Something I'm not going to talk any more about here, but believe you me, I have covered in therapy. The second story was about doing a sex scene day one, scene one, in a show that I was brand new to, where I basically wasn't even introduced to the actress that I was simulating sex with. It was just kind of like, hey guys, here we are, get down on the ground, take your clothes off, and let's start having sex. And that is also true. There was no intimacy coordinator. There was no setup, introduction, or any effort to make us feel comfortable whatsoever. It was literally like, hi, I'm Ryan. Here's my whole body. Let's get on the ground. Really kind of painting a dystopian picture of the entertainment industry, but I love my job, I swear. So by process of elimination, you now know that the third story contained the lie. In that story, I said that during the dead girl walking sex scene with Barrett, we made such passionate fake love to each other that my microphone got caught, got ripped out of my head, and I had to do the subsequent next scene into Barrett's microphone on her head the whole time. That did not happen. My microphone never got ripped out. Although there were a lot of very, um, interesting, let's just say kerfuffles during that sex scene, but that is a story for another video. In this video, I will be telling you three stories about projects I almost did or should have done but didn't end up doing. All of them may contain elements of the truth, but two of them are absolutely true and one of them contains at least within it a bold-faced lie. So put your proverbial internet detective hats on and let's dive in. The first story is about the Broadway musical A Bronx Tale. This was back almost 10 years ago now. I was up for the lead role of Calogero. I had to look that up because I already forgot which role I was up for. Again, this was almost 10 years ago now. I believe the Broadway show ended up happening in 2016, so that would have been two years before I did Wicked. That would have been my Broadway debut, which would have been a big deal. It would have been an original Broadway company, and it would have been a lead role. I was super excited about it. I was super excited about the reception that I was getting, and I was slated to fly to New York for final callbacks, and I had to pull because I was doing a music project at the time that many of you know of called The Girl in the Dreamcatcher. And we were sort of doing like a mini tour, and we were actually due in Alabama for a concert that was going to pay like a pretty significant amount of money. And so at the time I was sort of like, I need this money. I, I, I can't not go to this concert. The concert and the final callback conflicted and they were not able to move the final callback. So I could not go to New York to do the callback. The crazy twist about this story, and I hate to even bring this up, but it's an important anecdote. A few days before we left for Alabama, we got a very credible report that someone was planning a assault on us, and that threat was traced back to the town in Alabama that we were going to sing at. And so we ended up canceling the concert for our own safety. A police report was opened. There was all this crazy stuff. And at the end of the day, I could have actually gone to New York to do that final callback because we canceled the show in Alabama. So I was out a lot of money. I was out an opportunity to potentially make my Broadway debut and obviously a Bronx tale went on without me. That was a crazy, crazy, crazy time in my life. I'm not going to interface too publicly about how all of that went, but needless to say, that was a crazy crazy time. Story two is a whole gag. So I just mentioned the girl in the Dreamcatcher. As many of you know, I was in a relationship with my co-star from the Disney Channel show Liv and Maddie. And Disney just loved putting us together and stuff for the money. We did Liv and Maddie together. We did Austin and Allie together. We even did a movie together called Monsterville, the Cabinet of Souls. And anytime there was a way to orchestrate us being together, it did better for ratings. It did better for viewings. It did better for putting our sort of relationship out into the world. So they loved that. My partner at the time was attached to the Descendants project project and Descendants 2 was coming up. 
Kenny Ortega, the director of Descendants 2, was at this point already a great friend of mine and a fan. He had seen me in Heathers. I actually auditioned for Descendants 1 and uh, got very close to being a part of that movie. So when Descendants 2 came around, there was talk from Disney about me playing, I don't even remember his name, the Hook, the Captain Hook character. No offense, but I didn't actually ever end up watching that movie. So this is where things get crazy. Kenny also really wanted me to play Brad Majors in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I ended up doing. Rocky Horror Picture Show shot in the spring of 2016 and Descendants 2 shot in the summer of 2016. So we were actually double negotiating to see if it could work for me to go back to back with Kenny for both of those movies. Disney ended up stepping in in the 11th hour and being like, wait, 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 wait. You're gonna do the Rocky Horror Picture Show and then you're gonna be doing Descendants and then you're gonna be promoting both of them at the same time. Descendants is a big movie on a child programming network and the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and this is true, is a movie glorifying gay space alien sex orgies. So we're gonna need you to maybe not do both and pick. Also, anecdotally, my partner at the time was also up for the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but since she was already attached to the Descendants Enterprise, for the same reason, she could not do both, and obviously she didn't have a say in the matter because she was already attached. So I ended up having to make a choice between being I forget, the son of Captain Hook or whatever, or Brad Literal Majors in the Rocky Horror Picture Show remake. I chose Rocky Horror Picture Show, at which point Disney Channel changed the locks on me and I haven't done another project with them since. While we are on the DCOM train, story three has to do with another beloved DCOM and what I believe remains the best named movie of all time, Teen Beach Movie. So Teen Beach Movie 1 had already come and gone by the time I was on Disney's radar in a serious way, but Teen Beach Movie 2, Revenge of the Beaches, was coming down the pike, and Ryan was hot off the presses from his four-season arc as Diggy Smalls. So I'm gonna be totally honest here, this isn't the best story because I don't even remember who I auditioned for, and much like Descendants 2, hate to admit it, but I did not watch Teen Beach Movie 2. Not really in my demographic. So I don't actually know who I was auditioning for, but I was auditioning for a new role in Teen Beach Movie 2. This time it's personal. Revenge of the Teens. And I went in, I did a chem read with Maya. It went super great. Disney was really interested. I was touring with the girl in the Dreamcatcher, and so we couldn't make dates work. And at the end of the time, Disney just said, okay, you know what? This is too complicated. We're gonna go with someone else. So we couldn't make the deets work out and Teen Beach Movie 2 set sail. All of which to say, I could have been even more of a Disney Channel heartthrob cemented in the annals of history. But whether it was pirate ship or surfboard, unfortunately, I just missed the wave. See what I did there? Which story is or contains the bold-faced lie? I was up for a Bronx Tale, Descendants 2, or Teen Beach Movie 2. Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, to whatever god, goddess, source, or force you believe in, send a prayer up that I will never be asked to simulate sex with an inflatable animal ever again. And, not for nothing, that that movie never gets released. Thank you so much for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Bye everyone!